I was at this conference and I kept on asking annoying question. Why annoying? Because in advanced physics conference, usually you don't ask questions that has to do with fundamental physics. Everybody there is supposed to have accepted fundamental physics, learned them a long time ago, they don't want to revisit it. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be in like, you know, you know, 11-fold geometry of calabial space, string theory, all this stuff is happening, really complex equation, and I kept on asking basic questions. For example, <laughs> I was getting there. Gee. Uh, at one point, I, I pulled out my... Or gravitation, and I opened it on page 719, and I said, so if I understand well, uh, from all the equations that we've been studying, um, I, uh, the universe model that we have today resembles a balloon, and this is actually the example they give you in physics text, um, and it's a balloon that's expanding that has pennies glued to it. And the pennies are representing galaxies. And as the balloon expands, the galaxies move away from each other. And everybody's like, yes, Nassim, that's correct. And I said, well, the part I'm missing, I'm sure I missed it. I'm sure, you know, you guys can point me out to it and I'll just shut up from there on. But, like, what I really want to know, and I haven't found it, and I've been studying a lot, you know. And so what I really want to know is where the equation that explains Who's this guy? <laughs> and the whole room, I got a different, you know, response. The whole room became really silent, you know. I always remember there was a student, a PhD student there, and he went like... <laughs> I was drinking his coffee. And, uh, and I could see the director of the physics department there started to sweat a little bit. And I, I think he thought I was going to say the word God in the physics department. You know, it's like, oh man, please, not in front of my students. <laughs> and, uh, and so I say, hey, you know, let's draw the rest of the guy. And notice that uh, when the balloon expands, yes, the lungs must contract. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And that's, uh, you know, not being accounted for in our current physics. All of our physics today are based on expansion, explosion. It's the male approach to the universe. <laughs> our most advanced technologies, our most advanced uh, engineers and, and the people that we respect the most in science are people that make these phallic-like symbol large, you know, cylinders. They fill them full of fuel highly explosive material. It's our approach to space travel. And then, you know, put a little capsule on the end, find volunteers, <laughs> stick them in there, light the bottom, stand back and go, oh my God, I hope they survive. <laughs> Send them a few miles up, right? And then at the end, it's like large cylinder, and then there's a little ejaculation, poof. <laughs> few guys in there. We put the fuel, we push a piston down, our car gets going. Everything's on explosion, but how does the explosive side of creation, how the entropic side of creation occur if there's no centropy? If there is no movement to the center, if there is no compression prior, I mean, for a fuel to come to exist, there must be dynamics that compress that energy into that fuel. 
right? If the universe exploded from a point, you know, smaller than an atom, which is the standard model which, of the Big Bang, which I'm not fond of and I show you why, um, then something must have put that energy in there. There must be a compressive, there must be a collapsing form of the universe that's occurring at the exact same time as the expansion one. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. 